Blessed and pleasant. Good morning, my brothers and sisters in Christ, and welcome to another edition of Morning Prayer brought to you by the Anglican Diocese of Belize. First and foremost, allow me to apologize. Yesterday, our service was pre recorded because I had some traveling to do, and I, you know what? Facebook, for some reason, has been giving trouble. I'm hoping it will work well this morning that we are live instead of it being pre recorded. But listen, let me tell you, Facebook has been changing up the rules and they are not playing. Many things have been going awry these past few weeks. The struggle is real. But it's a beautiful, beautiful Wednesday morning here in beautiful Dangriga. The sun is shining. The birds are singing. There's not a gray cloud in the sky. It is a nice shade of blue with some white puffs just here and there scattered like only artist God can paint them. We're going to kick things off this wonderful morning with one entitled, Though I May Speak. Let's have a listen.
a beautiful one there entitled Do I May Speak. And today we are celebrating the Feast of St. Bartholomew. It's August the 24th and today is the Feast Day of St. Bartholomew. And so let's get our words here up on screen that we can continue for today, Wednesday, August the 24th. There we are. That part was painless. <laughs> let's see if it continues that way. I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Words from Psalm 122, verse 1. If you are following along in your CPWI Books of Common Prayer, we are on page 35. Hear us, O Lord, for your mercy is great. We will exalt you, O God, our Savior, and praise your name forever and ever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. We continue with our prayer of intent, which can be found on page 36 in our CPWI Books of Common Prayer. Father, we come together in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, to offer you our worship, praise, and thanksgiving. To you belong all power and glory. You are the source of all goodness. Let our worship bear witness to your peace and saving power. Through your spirit, may we ever rejoice in the abiding presence of our risen and ascended Lord. Amen. Our first canticle for this morning is the canticle, the Benedictus. Blessed are you, Lord, the God of Israel. You have come to your people and set them free. You have raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of your servant, David. Through your holy prophets, you promised of all to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our forebears, and to remember your holy covenant. This was the oath you swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship you without fear, holy and righteous before you all the days of your life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare the way to give God's people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine upon those who dwell in, the, in darkness and in the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. At this time, we pause to call to mind briefly those things that, in thought, word, or deed, we may have committed, things that might have been displeasing to Almighty God, things that might have been unkind to our neighbors, or things that might have been unfair, even to our very selves. For these times and these moments, Lord, we pray to you for the forgiveness of our sins. Together we pray. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. At this time, we have the reading of our psalms, and our psalm appointed for this morning is Psalm number 86, and the psalm will be read for us by Mrs. Carol Moore. Let's have a listen. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 86. Bow down your ear, O Lord, and answer me for I am poor and in misery. Keep watch over my life, for I am faithful. Save your servant who puts his trust in you. Be merciful to me, O Lord, for you are my God. I call upon you all the day long. Gladden the soul of your servant. For to you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. For you, O Lord, are good and forgiving. And great is your love toward all who call upon you. Give ear, O Lord, to my prayer, and attend to the voice of my supplications. In the time of my trouble, I will call upon you.
for you will answer me. Among the gods there is none like you, O Lord, nor anything like your works. All nations you have made will come and worship you, O Lord, and glorify your name, for you are great. You do wondrous things, and you alone are God. Teach me your way, O Lord, and I will walk in your truth. Knit my heart to you that I may fear your name. I will thank you, O Lord my God, with all my heart, and glorify your name for evermore. For great is your love toward me. You have delivered me from the nettermost pit. The arrogant rise up against me, O God, and a band of violent men seeks my life. They have not set you before their eyes. But you, O Lord, are gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and full of kindness and truth. Turn to me and have mercy upon me. Give your strength to your servant and save the child of your handmaid. Show me a sign of your favor so that those who hate me may see it and be ashamed. Because you, O Lord, have helped me and comforted me. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be. Amen. Happy 36th wedding anniversary, Lisbeth and Zane Castillo. And there you have it. Miss Carol was reading in honor of Mr. Zane and Miss Lisbeth celebrating a wedding anniversary today. Congratulations. We continue with our second canticle for this morning, the third song of Isaiah. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has dawned upon you. For behold, darkness covers the land, and deep gloom enshrouds your peoples. But over you the Lord will rise, and his glory will appear upon you. Nations will stream to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawning. Your gates will always be open. By day or night, they will never be shut. They will call you the city of the Lord, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Violence will no more be heard in your land, ruin or destruction within your borders. You will call your walls salvation and all your portals praise. The sun will no more be your light by day and by night you will not need the brightness of the moon. The Lord will be your everlasting light, and your God will be your glory. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Our Bible reading for this morning comes from the book of Genesis. I don't know why it says Deuteronomy there. It comes from the book of Genesis, chapter 28, verses 10 through to 17. Let's have a listen. Today's reading comes from the book of Genesis, chapter 28, verses 10 through 17. Jacob left Beersheba and went toward Haran. He came to a certain place and stayed there for the night. Because the sun had set, taking one of the stones of the place, he put it under his head and lay down in that place. And he dreamed that there was a ladder set up on the earth, the top of it reaching to heaven, and the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. And the Lord stood beside him and said, I am the Lord, the God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac. The land on which you lie I will give to you and to your offspring, and your offspring shall be like the dust of the earth, and you shall spread abroad to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south, and all the families of the earth shall be blessed in, in you and in your offspring. Know that I am with you and will keep you wherever you go, and will bring you back to this land, for I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. Then Jacob woke from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I did not know it. And he was afraid and said, How awesome is this place! This is none other than the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We want to thank Miss Carol for leading us in the reading, and again, 
we want to wish Mr. Zane and Miss Liz a happy and blessed 36th anniversary. We're going to get back to the beginning of our reading here. Let's see if I could get that done. And there it is. Mm -hmm. And today, of course, as you would have remembered, we are celebrating the Feast of St. Bartholomew. Mm -hmm. The 24th of August is the Feast of St. Bartholomew. But really and truly, who is St. Bartholomew? That is an excellent question. And so I did a little bit of homework last night and hopefully I wasn't falling asleep while I was doing that and it makes sense this morning. Mm -hmm. But St. Bartholomew is, of course, he, he appears in the New Testament and he's only listed in the names of the 12 apostles. You remember the 12 disciples? So they were 12 disciples. Jesus came to save them and then it lists them off and then the last name that is called is and Bartholomew. Right, right, right. So he's not given much prominence even in song um, about it. But St. Bartholomew is normally listed, you know, in the as six pairs. So the third pair in the Synoptic Gospel is Philip and Bartholomew. So this would have been, it seems, a tag team duo. Yes. And Bartholomew is in the early accounts of the gospel. Yeah, he is referred to as one also called Nathaniel. Supposedly, it's the same person. Now, John in his gospel does not refer to Bartholomew by name, but only refers to him as Nathaniel. Yeah, and the reasoning for this is well, for believing that Nathaniel and Bartholomew is the same person, yes, is that John's Nathaniel is introduced as one of the earliest followers of Jesus and in terms which suggest that he became eventually one of the twelve. He is clearly not the same person as Peter, Andrew, James, John, Philip, Thomas, Judas, Iscariot, Judas, not Iscariot, called Thaddeus, yes, all of whom John specifically names separately. He's clearly not Matthew, whose call is described differently, which means Bartholomew, James the son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot were the only three who could be this Nathaniel person. But of these three, yes, Simon the Zealot is one person that is called like differently, and James the son of Alphaeus came with his brother John. So we know that neither of these two could be this Nathaniel person that John refers to. So it leaves then by means of reasoning that Bartholomew is the same individual as this Nathaniel that John names. Now his name, Bartholomew, is of course a patrimonic word, yes? And and Bar means son of. So he was the son of Tolmai or Talmai, yes? which is now Ptolemy. So he's the son of Ptolemy. And therefore, more than likely, instead of calling him the son of Ptolemy, he would have had his own name, a.k.a. Nathaniel, son of Ptolemy, right? And it seems likely, yes, that it's the one in the same. And Nathaniel is introduced in, in John's narrative or John's gospel writing as a friend of Philip. And Bartholomew, of course, is also paired with Philip on three or four um, listings by the, the apostles themselves. And the truth is, we have no certain information about Bartholomew's later life. Some writers, including Eusebius, who is a historian, yes, um, back in, oof, in the early days, he says that Bartholomew would be one that was preaching in the region of India. Yes, after the death of Christ. And the majority of traditions give varying details about this and list Bartholomew as also preaching in Armenia. It is believed that this Bartholomew slash Nathaniel person was killed finally by being skinned alive and then being beheaded. And yes, you you hear it, you hear you heard it here. What happens is most of the the um most of the evangelists in the Bible died very very gruesome death and to be skinned alive man let me tell you to skin an animal after you have killed him 
is not a beautiful process to witness, but imagine ripping a man's skin from his flesh while he's yet alive. And why? Because he refused to deny the gospel truth about the resurrected Lord. And you have to understand that the 12 that were followers of Jesus came to some very, very gruesome end mm -hmm. because they refused to give up on their faith. Now, it's interesting because to give up on one's faith, especially after one had lived, seen, experienced firsthand the things they did, yeah, might not have been an easy thing. And to let go of faith when all hope seems lost seems to be an easy thing to do, especially to save your own skin, in this case, literally for Bartholomew. And the reading contributed for this morning is the one from Genesis 28, where Jacob is running from Esau. Yes, he has done wrong by his brother. And of course, he has tricked his brother out of this blessing from Abraham, their father. Yes, and Esau, of course, is angry. And Jacob is running away because Esau has given away the blessing of the birthright. Yeah. And we know that the blessing of the birthright included two thirds of the father's wealth and all of this. And it's interesting. Yeah. And wow. He is running and he's in the wilderness. And it is in the middle of the wilderness that he comes face to face with God at a place called Bethel. And Jacob comes to face face to face with God in a dream. Yes. And he is traveling eastward towards the ancestral land of his grandfather. Yeah. And it is there in this desolate wilderness that he has a significant dream while using a pit ram, a stone for a pillow. One could imagine only the strange flood of feeling in, in Jacob at that moment, the 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 fair Yes, he's being hunted down by his brother. The loneliness in the wilderness is his isolation. Maybe the excitement of, of what possibilities and anticipation of what could come ahead. And it's an important time in the life of, of Jacob. And here with his head on this stone, he has a dream. And he dreams that a ladder is set up on earth. And the top of the ladder reaches to heavens. And the angels of God are ascending and descending. Yes, and it's in his dreams that he will now access heaven. He knew God was closer than ever um, because he knew that his survival at that point was dependent upon God, which it always is. But he felt closer at any rate. And he never thought before that there could be real access, perhaps, and interaction between heaven and earth. Yeah. But Jesus, of course, later on will be the, the access to heaven that we all need. But in this dream, Jacob sees this ladder coming down from heaven and the angels of the Lord ascending and descending yeah and god speaks to jacob yeah and he says to him i am the lord the god of abraham this is verse 13 the god of your the abraham your father and the god of isaac the land on which you lie i will give to you and your offspring and your offspring shall be like the dust of the earth and you shall spread abroad to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south yes and these words were words of comfort and hope to Jacob at this critical crossroad in his life. So essentially, God repeated to Jacob the terms of the covenant that he gave to Abraham and Isaac before him. And these words of promise were, were hopeful, yes, because if I'm running away from my brother, because I'm fearful that my brother will kill me, the promise of the fact that there will be offspring that comes from me must mean that I will have children. I have to have life. In order to have children. So he, it was an assurance that this wilderness period he was going through was not going to be the end of it. And I find it interesting that that is the reading associated with Bartholomew, who, yes, found a life of difficulty because of his faithfulness to God and who found a very difficult death because of his faithfulness to God. And it's almost as if though. The reading is pointing in the direction on the Feast of St. Bartholomew and kind of saying, you know what? The struggles in life might be real, like we've been hearing in Job. And the struggles just before death might be even more difficult, yeah, in the case of Bartholomew. But the hope, the hope of it all is that there is life beyond the hardship. And that is something that 
resonated with me last night. Yeah? It resonated with me to undoubtedly hear, to undoubtedly feel and know that there's a great God who comes to the rescue of his people, especially in the darkest hour of their need. And right now, there are people who are mourning the loss of loved ones. There are people who are struggling with illnesses. There are people who financially don't know where the next ends will come from. There are people who are fearful of their life for whatever reason it might be. There's a world that is almost drowning in darkness. Yes? And the hope of all of us as we sojourn through this darkness is to remember that there is light at the end of the tunnel. And while that might sound like a cliche that is used in regular secular terms, for us, the light at the end of the tunnel is the light of Christ. And it is this light that we are called upon to have a life-changing experience with. It is this light that comes from God that is meant to give us comfort and hope as we go through the difficulties in our lives. Yeah? And the promise of the covenant of God, that he will neither forsake us, that he will not leave us, that he will be a light to guide us, yes, along our path and a lantern to our feet. Those promises from God are true. And it is only when we allow the darkness to completely overshadow us that we lose sight of this light. You know? I mean, the Lord's promise the Lord's promise to, to, to Jacob, yes? No, verse 15, know that I am with you and will keep you wherever you go. And I will bring you back to this land for I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. And that for me, man, greater words, greater words than that. I don't know. That was a promise that the Lord made to Jacob. and. It's a promise that he made that those who were faithful to him in Jesus Christ must have felt. I mean, what did the Lord tell them? Know that I go to prepare a place for you, he said to his disciples. Know that the world will persecute you and men will revile you and speak all manner of evil against you falsely because you have a love of me. Know that they will persecute you for so have they persecuted the prophets before you and even me. Know that you're going to face difficult times in this life because you believe in me. But know that even in the midst of the difficulties, I will not forsake you. I am with you. I will keep you wherever you go. I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised. And that, 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 and that alone brings me peace. That brings me peace. In moments when I feel I simply can't take another step. In moments where I feel that it is all so overwhelming. In moments when I feel that there is so much of it and not enough of me. That gives me hope. In moments where I feel the darkness surrounds me and there is no place for me to turn. In moments where I feel that there is no one that understands what it is I am going through. That gives me hope. To know that there is a God who can tell, know and understand exactly what I feel. Who promises to be with me. Who promises to sustain me. Who promises never to leave me. To know that the promises of God are true, that God does not lie, that what he says will pass will come to pass, that what he says will not happen will not happen. To know that I could lean on his everlasting arm, trusting in his mercy, his goodness and his righteousness because these things endure forever. That is the hope. Listen, I don't know what it is you are going through. I don't know what it is you are going through. Whether it is bouts of illness, whether it is difficulties in terms of your family relations, whether you're having a hard time at work, whether financially the ends are just not adding up, whether it is an, a problem that you have been trying to overcome for years, but you seem bounded by it. I don't know what your problem is, but I know what the pro promise is. 
I don't know what the problem is, but I know what the promise is. The promise is that he will not leave you until the plans that he has for you, until the good that he has promised you has come to pass. You just have to keep the faith. You just have to keep the faith. In the midst of his wilderness, in the midst of the uncertainty that lies ahead and the dangers that were pursuing behind, Jacob got that promise. We've been listening to the story of Job and even when the people around him could not bring comfort after all he had gone through and was going through, that was the promise. That's the promise of God for you, beloved. I know your help has not been what you want it to be. I know your finances have not been what you want it to be. I know your relationships have not been what you want it to be. But continue to offer it up to God because he will bring you back to where it is supposed to be and he will not leave you until he has done what he has promised. That's it. And the reading tells us Jacob woke from his sleep. <laughs> Jacob woke from his sleep. He arose from the darkness of sleep and in his heart was light, light enough to recognize, surely this is the place of God and I didn't know it. Surely where I am right now in the midst of this hardship is still the presence of God and the house of God. And clearly where God is, is to get to heaven. God's promises are true. Even if they seem far away from you now, know that the distance between your problems and the solution is as short as the distance between the floor and your knee. Surrender it to God. Let him, who is the author of all things, bring you the peace and the comfort and solutions that you need. I don't know who needs to hear it, but I pray that the grace and love and mercy of God continues to sustain you even as you journey through this period of difficulty and darkness. I pray that your eyes remain focused and fixed upon him who is light. And may the light of Christ deliver you from your darkness and bring you into everlasting peace. Amen. Let us continue then with the profession of our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. Together we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate. He was crucified, he died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. But on the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. As our Savior has taught us, so let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen.
For our suffrage this morning, we use suffrage C on page 44. Let us pray. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy on us, Lord, have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy, for we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope, and we shall never hope in vain. Our first collet for today is the collet for St. Bartholomew. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who gave to your apostle Bartholomew grace truly to believe and to preach your word, grant that your church may love what he believed and preach what he taught. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Together we say a call it for peace. Eternal God, in whose perfect kingdom no sword is drawn but the sword of righteousness, no strength known but the strength of love, so mightily spread abroad your spirit that all peoples may be gathered under the banner of the Prince of Peace as children of one Father, to whom be dominion and glory, now and for ever. Amen. At this time, we turn to our prayers of personal intercessions and thanksgiving. This morning, we would like to extend birthday greetings to the following individuals. Celebrating her birthday yesterday was Miss Catherine Temple, Mrs. Gladys Cadogan, and Miss Mary Williams. Celebrating her birthday today is Miss Tammy Tate and Mr. Raymond Kamal Jr. We would also like to extend anniversary greetings to Mr. Zane and Miss Lisbeth Castillo as they celebrate 36 years of wedded bliss. A happy and blessed birthday to all those celebrating birthdays. May God's blessing be upon you, not just for today, but for all the remaining days of your lives. Happy birthday! In our prayers, we continue to give Almighty God thanks for persons who have recovered from illness and surgery, and we continue to pray for healing and recovery for the following individuals. We remember in our prayers, Miss Judith, Miss Ines, Miss Pauline, Miss Rose, Miss Grace, Miss Celine, Miss Maria, Miss Norma, Miss Mary, and Miss Marilyn. We remember Miss Monica, Miss Eileen, Miss Des, Miss Aislin, Miss Justine, Miss Lisa, Miss Soila, Miss Beryl, Miss Janet, Miss Nina, Miss Margaret, Miss Sylvia, Miss Janice, Miss Dylan, Miss Alma, Miss Leslie, Miss Crystal, Miss Amelia, Miss Venancia, and Reverend Ilona. We pray for Miss Betty, Miss Florence, Miss Marva, Miss Gloria, Miss Celestina, Miss Jessica, Miss LaShawn, Miss Althea, Miss Teresa, Miss Laverne, Miss Agnes, Miss Marta, Miss Loretta, Miss Barbara, Miss Ruby, Miss Arlette, Miss Yolanda, Miss Janice, Miss Glenda, Miss Joyce, Miss Esme, Miss Helen, Miss Alma, Miss Maud, Miss Elma, Miss Delvoreen, Miss Daphne, Miss Geraldine, Miss Myrtle, and Miss Kim. We pray for Miss Laverne, Miss Mona, Miss Darla, Miss Molly, Miss Amy, Miss Jean, Miss Gladys, Miss Isme, Miss Elva, and Miss Doreen. We remember and pray for Miss Verolyn, Miss Abelina, Miss Jasmine, Miss Alaire, Miss Elena, Miss Louise, Miss Rita, Miss Bernadine, Miss Fiona, Miss Catherine, Miss Kelia, Miss Carolyn, Michelle Madine, 
Miss Sandra, Miss Lisa T, Miss Sheila, Miss Gretel, Miss Michelle, Miss Velina, Miss Dominic, and Miss Pat. In our prayers, we continue to remember and pray for the following of our brothers. We remember and pray for Mr. Zane, Mr. Larry, Mr. Kenrick, Mr. Wilfred, Mr. Marvin, Mr. Philip, Father Eric, Mr. Jeffrey, and Mr. Brindell. We remember and pray for Mr. Rudolph, Mr. Finley, Mr. Costa, Mr. Oscar, Mr. Freddy, Mr. Dion, Mr. Charles, Mr. Edmundo, and Mr. Tony. We pray for Mr. Dudley, Mr. Rupert, Mr. Enrique, Mr. Robert, Mr. Rodney, Mr. Ismael, Father Jerris, Father Constancio, and Mr. Ian. We pray for Mr. Leroy Jr., Mr. Dion, Mr. Alfred, Mr. Ian, Mr. Michael Griffith, Mr. Michael Samuels, Mr. Michael Soberanis, Mr. Basil, Mr. Clinton, Mr. Wilmot, Mr. Russell, Mr. Kurt, Mr. Gilbert, Mr. Lyndon, Mr. Mark, Mr. Emmett, and Bishop Lawrence Nicasio. For all those who have requested the prayers of the church, and especially for those who have none to pray for them. In our prayers, we continue to pray for those who are grieving the loss of a loved one. This morning, we remember and pray for the family of baby Jamaya Martinez. We pray for the family of Miss Jovita Palacio. We pray for the family of Miss Ines. We remember and pray for all persons who have recently laid a loved one to rest or all who are preparing to lay a loved one to rest. We continue to pray for God's comfort and peace to be upon you during this time of bereavement and we pray for eternal rest for those who have died. We remember also the family of Miss Ramonita Sabal and the family of Mr. Winsdale Rogers. In our prayers, we continue to pray for God's protection over our loved ones who are far away from us. We pray especially for our students, remembering Tammy, Anwa, Karina, Courtney, Akua, Marissa, Ashley, Rhea, Kai, Elton, and Arian. For our loved ones in the military, praying for Emil, Jade, Jason, Prince, Gavin, Barry, Sam, Kishin, and Alvin. We continue to remember and pray for the protection and enablement of all medical professionals in the performance of their duties. We continue to remember and pray especially for Drs. Molina, Manzanero, Shogreen, Arana, Joseph, Eck, Lawrence, Sosa, and Cuellar. We remember our nurses, praying for Nurse McKean, Nurse Gill, Nurse Herrera, Nurse Aurel, Nurse Cherie, Nurse Joycelyn, Nurse Alberta, Nurse Aaron, Nurse Alejandra, Nurse Olivia, Nurse Julie, and Nurse Ashley. We remember all those who are working in the various sector, sectors of our medical system, from our cleaners, cooks, and adlers to our lab technicians, our pharmacists, our drivers, both in public and private institutions, all who give of themselves for the well-being of others. We pray for God's protection and provision over you. We continue to remember and pray for persons who have contracted COVID-19. We continue to pray for the ready availability of a cure or vaccine. For persons in the various isolation wards, for the people who man these testing stations. Indeed, we pray for the containment and eventual elimination of this COVID-19. 
In our prayers, we continue to remember and pray for the combating of the economic fallout caused by this pandemic, for persons who would have lost employment, persons whose salaries would have been reduced, persons who are struggling financially to make ends meet. We continue to remember and pray for God's provision and protection over them, especially as well for those who are most vulnerable in our society, for the poor, the needy, the elderly, those with pre-existing health conditions, those with mental health difficulties, those with addiction and substance abuse problems, for those in situations of any form of violence or any form of abuse. We pray for God's protection and provision over you. We continue to remember the branches of our security forces. We remember the government. We remember our prime minister, our governor general, our parliamentarians. We remember all our ambassadors and all who work in the diplomatic corps. We remember and pray for the members of the, the church family or the church leadership, for those in the private sector and all non-governmental organizations who are involved in the fight against COVID-19 or in any form of humanitarian aid. We continue to remember those members of the international community who are still most severely affected by COVID-19 and this pandemic, and those who are affected by the ravages of war, the ravages of any type of civil unrest, those who are affected by the ravages of natural disasters and gun violence. We continue to pray for our own self and our region against the ravages of hurricanes during this hurricane season. We conclude our intercessions by praying together. Almighty and eternal God, sanctify and govern our hearts and bodies in the ways of your laws and the works of your commandments. That under your protection now and ever, we may be preserved in body and soul through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. By means of announcement, brothers and sisters, I want to thank you for joining us for morning prayer this morning. It is indeed a blessing and a privilege to be able to greet each new day in your presence, as well as in the presence of Almighty God. It is indeed a lovely day. It's warm here in Dangriga, the amount of sun that is outside. But we just prayed for protection from the ravages of hurricane. So let's keep that prayer going and be thankful for the weather that we have. Mm -hmm. We want to remind you of our broadcast schedule for today. Following this broadcast, at noonday, we have noonday prayers. Then at evening, we have 5.30 evening prayer. And at nighttime, we have compline at 9 p.m. to close off our day. We do hope and invite you to be a part of these broadcasts as you are available. And even if you can't make it, we are thankful for your prayerful support of the work and the ministry of the Anglican Diocese of Belize. We're going to wrap things up this morning with our prayer of dedication, the grace, the dismissal, and then our final hymn. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of your holy word. May it be a lantern to our feet, a light to our paths, and a strength to our lives. Take us and use us to love and to serve all persons through the power of the Holy Spirit and in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Brothers and sisters, May the grace of our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and forevermore. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. We're going to close off with one that maybe you will think I should have started with. But let me tell you, this one, for me, is a fitting end for today. As morning has gilded the skies and the sun has break through the darkness, let us in all things with thankful hearts remember to sing out that Jesus Christ is to be praised. I do pray you have a blessed and beautiful day. Please do all to keep yourself and your family safe. Until tomorrow morning, same place, same time. God bless and bye for now.